everyone, and uh, I am Sam Harlow. I'm the online learning librarian for UNCG University Libraries. So UNCG Libraries uh, came up with this idea for this series of webinar on research and applications, so basically library resources that can help you with your research um, and teaching at UNCG. So in this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG Libraries resources and research tools. These 30-minute webinars will be recorded in WebEx meetings, where we are now, and placed on the library webpage through YouTube, where they will be eventually closed captions and not have participant data available for the public. So um, if you, um, you will get follow-up emails with the recording, but here is the link to where all the webinar information lives. I just put it in the chat. It also will have links to other applicable links and presentation materials uh, if it, if it uh, is applicable. <laughs> so I'm going to cover some logistical things about how this webinar is going to run. Please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio next to your name or at the bottom of your screen to turn it red. And I'll be doing that throughout um, to help with feedback, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, you can ask questions in the chat and I will, um, you know, uh, monitor the chat. If you do not have a microphone, you are welcome to participate in chat through questions, and at the end, we're going to have a conversation with the presenters through microphone or the chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, put them in there. I feel like I just said chat a lot. Sorry. <laughs> I will track the questions. So if there are technical issues, you can call me or email me. I'm going to drop my number into the chat box. So while I'm putting that in there, are there any questions about the logistics before we start? Okay. So, without further ado, this session is being hosted by Christine Fisher, Head of Technical Services of UNCG Libraries, and Mark Schumacher, Arts and Humanities Librarian. So, um, I'm going to hand it over to you guys. Are you ready? We're ready. Okay. Thanks. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you, Sam. We are interested in sharing this uh, two platforms offered by Digitalia for Spanish language resources. And um, I have to say at the beginning that I do not speak Spanish, but we just think this is, this is important enough that we want to share it with you and hope that you are able to use it in your uh, instruction. So we'll start off with Digitalia Hispanica, and that is Spanish language ebooks and e-journals. This is a, an academic database that's offered through the UNCG University Libraries. They offer more than 25,000 Spanish language ebooks and 3,600 e-journals, and they do continue to add content on a regular basis. When you're on the uh, within the campus IP range, we are recognized as licensed users, and we can go through their website, digitaliapublishing.com. For off-campus access, it really has to be through the library's catalog for or through the databases page, but we have to be authenticated as coming from UNC Greensboro. So a good way to handle that is for you to select the titles of interest, put those uh, permalinks into your syllabus or your um, Canvas site, and uh, students will be able to click on those and get to the resources. And we'll talk about that in a minute. There are over 170 publishers, uh, including university presses, and you can see at the bottom of the screen a number of the different publishers who provide their, their content. There is content from Spain primarily, but also Colombia, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Peru, the US, and France, among others. And just to get a sense of how uh, our, our students and uh, faculty and instructors are using uh, the Digitalia Hispanica, during the fall semester, these are the top publishers who were accessed. We had over 400 ebook views in the fall, and we had these particular, these individual titles uh, for e-journals were accessed. They arrange their material in collections, and they cover a broad array of disciplines. The highest usage here at UNC Greensboro has been literature and history. Ebook features, they offer a lot of good reasons for us to want to use this platform, and the, the big one is that there are unlimited users. 
So if more than one student is trying to access the same item at the same time, there is no turn away. The, the, they can be viewed as PDFs, HTML, and they also have a listen option, which is really convenient. Now here's what, uh, what it looks like if you go into our catalog. Up at the top, you'll see that I had put in a title of a book that's, that's part of Digitalia Hispanica. And when I get into the full record, I see a little link button up here. So when I click on that, and I'll show you in a sec what that looks like, um, I'll get a, a, a URL that I can copy and paste into a syllabus or Canvas. So then when the student clicks on that link, they're brought down to into this record and they can click on view ebook here at the bottom and that will take them into the title. Uh, if they're off campus, they'll have to authenticate, but that is um, a convenient way to handle this. And so when you click the link button, this share link record will pop up with the link that you would want to, to copy and paste. When you go to the title, you get the cover art, you get some bibliographic information, the number of pages, for instance, what language, um, and there's a, a summary statement about the book. And then you can see how you can access the material through the PDF, HTML, or the Listen Viewer. And now we're going to go to the website. So I've I've got us at our homepage for the University Libraries. That's library.uncg.edu. There are multiple ways you can go. You can choose the databases link and go alphabetically under D to find Digitalia Hispanica. But a, a good way to go and an easy one to remember is choosing research guides by subject, choosing languages, literatures, and cultures. And you'll go to Mark's uh, LibGuide, his page for uh, that department. You'll see a tab here for finding books. We scroll down on that, and there is the link to Digitalia Hispanica. And it is not going there. Huh. Let me try. Oh, it's just very slow coming up. Um, let me go back and see if it will help for me to go through the databases link. I don't know why that would make a difference, but well, that can kind of slow things down, so I would just like give it a second. I think it's going to come up. All right, here's the home page. Sorry for that delay. You'll notice that it's recognizing us as University of North Carolina Greensboro. You've got a search box here at the top where you can do keywords uh, anywhere, or you can look for a title, author, or you may want to enter an ISBN and seek that title. There are um, cover, covers for what's new on Digitalia. Uh, you can scroll through that and choose newer material. As we go down, it shows you how many ebooks, e-journals, publishers are covered, and then where the content comes from. And you'll see that, that Spain is really the, the primary area. Uh, the, the, the pie chart shows you the disciplines that are covered, and here at the bottom, the e-collections arranged by discipline. Now, as always with a website, it seems that you can do things more than one way. And we're going to first take a look here at the left navigation uh, under ebooks. Uh, there are the various topics that you can choose. And we're going to go to literature fiction. That's subdivided into different areas. And I'm just going to go down to science fiction and fantasy. And here are the different titles and the cover art. We'll go into a book, and you see, just like we saw a little bit earlier, there's the big summary, the bibliographic information, and the ways that you can view the material. Um, there are translations on this website, so on the platform, so you might find something that was originally written in English that's been translated to Spanish. Underneath ebooks are e journals. Again, by subject area, I'm clicking on history, and you can choose which journal interests you. I'm choosing Hispania, and there you see each year and the issues for that particular year where you can click on that and go into the title. Again, on the left navigation, you can see e-collections, 
And what that is is a combination of the ebooks and e-journals in that subject area. So you know you can look together or you can look separately. Then the final item on the left navigation is publishers, and that's a list of all 170, 374 um, listed out so that you can um, choose one in particular if you have that uh, if you have that interest, and it will tell you how many. Um, books that they've published. Uh, here they've got 83 titles in this, uh, with this publisher. All right, so then up at the top, you see we've got eCollections as a button. And again, it goes by discipline so that you can choose what interests you. There's an eBooks link. And one thing that's nice about this is it also goes by publisher. So you can either do subject or publisher. Um, we're going to go down here and choose Anthropos, and I will just select that first title. And we're going to go into the PDF viewer. So from that we can go up here at the top, we can go page by page. To, to look at the book. We can select a particular page that we want to go to, and after you enter the number, you need to click Go to Page. So here we are in the book. Um, you can look on the left side of the screen where it says Table of Contents, and you can choose which chapter. We're going to go to Chapter 4. You can go in that manner. Uh, there's a search option where you can put in a keyword, search that within the text, and it will show you every instance of where that word appears. I think we don't, yeah, there we go. So you can click on that and it will go to that point in the book. And then there's also a print button where you can put in the range of pages that you'd like to print. Now you cannot print the entire book, but you can print portions. All right, let's go look at the HTML viewer. This one does tend to take a while to load, so we may not, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it offers a, a view kind of of the, of the way the book would look itself with two pages at a time as you go into the, into the book. And then you'll see at the bottom of the page, it's, it's letting you look at certain page numbers, you can skip to those. And it'll let you just scroll through uh, the whole content. Then the Listen Viewer, which is to me very interesting. Uh, you can go to a page in the book and let's go into a chapter. Okay, then you can listen You'll follow along with the words. You can click on tools and follow along by highlighting that. Or you can choose this open bar, and that's like a ruler to follow along. I've got to close that out. And I'm going to hit stop. Uh, you can save. We're on that particular page, so when it comes up, it's going to let me uh, copy or download that page. And just like the others, you can go page by page and look at that. Now, there also this is the layout view. It looks like what it looks like in the book, but there's also a text view, and that gives you the content without the formatting. All right, I know that was a quick review, but uh, we wanted to just give you a high, uh, the highlights of what you can do within Digitalia Hispanica. I am going to open up the PowerPoint again, and Mark is going, we're going to switch here, and Mark will talk to you about uh, the other resource we'd like to discuss. Hello, this is Mark. Uh, we're going to talk about sort of the 
sibling of the uh, database we just heard about. This is the Digitalia Film Library. There are hundreds of films from uh, numerous countries around the world, and they all uh, can be found in the catalog on the UNCG Library homepage by searching uh, the title. The films indeed come from many countries. Um, there are uh, over 200 films from the United States, although most of them are quite old, uh, not very many after 1960. Uh, there are films from uh, Latin America. We're going to see how we can look at the films from each of these countries, etc. cetera. Uh, a number from Europe and countries as far away from the Hispanic world as Russia, Latvia, Romania, and Slovakia. Quite a range of films available. What we have here is this film uh, from Spain from 1998, a, um, a 1959 uh, film about killer shrews. This filmmaker also did one about a giant uh, Gila monster and um, a uh, documentary made uh, in Canada in 2012 about this early person in the computer world. As I say, they do range widely. And their languages, we have uh, a number, uh, quite a number, all basically the uh, uh, European languages, Spanish, English, Portuguese, French, Swedish. We have Slovak, uh, Russian, Amharic from Ethiopia, Catalan from one area of, of uh, Spain, and Chevin, Chevenda, I hope I'm saying it close, a language spoken in South Africa. There are also a number of uh, silent movies, uh, mostly in, from the English uh, world, but we'll see. Some have subtitles. Uh, some don't, uh, and often you will have to select the subtitles to be shown. And you can also, as we will see in a minute or two, it says here, um, that you can see the subtitles that the, of the language being spoken in those films. You can do it two ways, as we're about to see, by searching or by browsing. Um, and we'll see some of those things. Um, I do want to mention that um, the descriptions seem to leave out at times uh, movies with uh, violence uh, or very graphic sex in them. This is a statement uh, that I took from the privacy policy. You may encounter content that may be deemed offensive, which content may or may not be identified as having explicit language, other features. Um, the searching, as I indicate, you can search anywhere in the database, basically, or if you want to look for a particular actor, uh, a particular film to see if it's here, uh, words from the synopsis. And then there's also a browsing um, way, and we're going to see that as well. This is a, a sample information about a film. We'll see this in a minute when we go online. Um, <clears throat> where the film was made, the original title, because often they're shown here translated into English, the kind of movie further down, which as we will see is a link uh, to the other movies in that genre, uh, the original languages. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what original language and languages available, what that difference is. Uh, and then a synopsis. So now let's uh, take a look at uh, the website. And we'll just go in uh, alphabetically here. Living right next to Hispanica is the film library. Now the first glance I found, and in this case also, it seems like there are two options looking at discovering the films and the documentaries. But it turns out that if you scroll down a ways, there's a listing of the collections and 
a listing of new content, um, which you can scroll through. Uh, there's only a handful listed here. But <clears throat> a couple of things to note. If uh, you want to see the entire website of Digitalia Film Library in Spanish, that can be done. I don't speak much Spanish uh, either, although my background in French literature uh, helps a little bit. But you can convert the whole um, page and site. Here now the search options, which we saw we'll go back and see in English, are now available uh, in Spanish. Let's go back to the English. This is very strange. I haven't figured this out. There's a login. But how one becomes an existing customer, there's no place to sign up for this. So I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to do for us. Let me click back here. Hidden under these four bars up here in the uh, upper left, are the various ways you can look at the materials here. The films um, will basically uh, provide, uh, I would say, the, the, the types of films, the genres. The collections tend to be very geographical. We're going to look at both those. And the documentaries are also grouped in a category. I'll start with the documentaries. I'm not going to look at one of those here today, but we see that there are anthropological, uh, arts, biographical, current affairs, historic documentaries, nature, social, and travel. So there's a, if you wanted uh, students to look at a kind of, of film, uh, a kind of documentary, they could explore it that way. The films alone um, come up in as I said, genres, in fact, they use it here, action movies, adventure movies, and you can see here that there are uh, <clears throat> quite a number of American films showing up, uh, many of them dating from many, many years ago. This I find rather amusing, that there are Betty Boop cartoons here from, I forget exactly how far back, well, here it tells us, <clears throat> excuse me, 1933, a brief uh, synopsis saying that these are some episodes from that show. And biopics, comedy, crime, disaster, not too many disasters, dramas, espionage, etc. And there are a number of different categories here. And you can browse them. Uh, each one lets you see all and it brings up the various ones. Here we see them. Here's the one that, <clears throat> that we saw in the, in the PowerPoint. It's interesting, too, that although the uh, image has the, um, the original language title, Nacht vor Augen, uh, La Hora de la Valientes, they tend to give the English translation of, of the title. And again, lots of different, there are police ones, sci-fi, a few silent films. I mentioned there are some silent films, thrillers, and some TV series, Dick Tracy. The other one, though, I want to look at, especially for um, possible class use, is that the collections are arranged uh, by and large by location, by country of origin. Um, um, I'm going to look at one of these in a minute. I, I do want to point out a rather curious situation. There are European cinemas, uh, a French collection, a topic rather than a, a, a place of origin, Italian. This is what confuses me. There is a Latin American selection and a Latino American collection. I believe that the ones in the first group, the selection, uh, are in fact all included in the other. Here we have the North American classic cinema. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, nearly all of these are 
um, films before the 1960s um, and all sorts of things. Famous actors obviously showing up, but movies that uh, are by and large, I would think, uh, forgotten to a great extent. So I'm going to go back up here and look at one example from the Bolivian collection. American Visa, it tells us a little bit about it and gives a description, a synopsis of the character who's having adventures in his life. Uh, he gets involved in a criminal plot. It lists the names of some of the cast and if you wanted to see if uh, Roberto Barbary um, was in some other movies. We could search that name, and it turns out in this collection, this is his only his only film. We can uh, play it. It does show us over here that the original language is Spanish, but there are English subtitles. If I click play. It has asked me to click it again. And since there's music here, I'm going to skip ahead to where the dialogue is hopefully taking place. It mentions subtitles, but notice here that they are not turned on. This little box, if I click it, now shows us the English subtitles that um, were mentioned, um, and we see what's going on. Um, let me go back. There was another movie um, I want to show you, uh, the Brazilian collection. Of course, most of these items are in uh, Portuguese. If we look at this one, it indicates that there are two possible uh, subtitles we can view. Now see, it's turned on here. It's going to come up with the English. We can either turn them off if one wanted to listen to the Portuguese. We could change it to Spanish. Let me jump ahead again to show you. And it's actually quite interesting that it can be changed so quickly. We're listening here to the Spanish and instantly we can switch to the English um, the English uh, subtitle. Uh, you will find on occasion that the synopses um, may sound uh, a bit like broken English. Uh, this is the text of one that I, not from this film, but a chance meeting of Maya and Jumbo becomes fateful. She falls in love and without meaning to itself becomes an accomplice, having decided to fake web. I don't understand that synopsis or what to expect from that movie, but um, <clears throat> they are at times confusing. Um, that's about all I wanted to say. Uh, okay. Click here. Well, okay. To go back. Sure. Click here and then. So, oops. Um, oops. That's all I wanted to say about uh, this uh, database. It's got lots of interesting movies, as I said, Russian, French, uh, many, many Spanish movies, but a wonderful place to explore uh, films. Thank you. All that. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any questions for Mark and Christine? There hasn't been any in the chat but I want to give you guys this last uh, chance. And I know it's uh, a little bit past one, so uh, please note their email addresses if you want to follow up with them um, or me as well. Um, and as you're thinking of your questions, feel free to put them in the chat or let me know if you want me to unmute you or you can unmute yourself. 
But um, as you guys are thinking, if you have any questions, um, the next webinar coming up in the uh, UNCG Libraries Research and Application Series is on March 13th at 1 p.m. and it is on OpenRefine, a free tool for messy data by Linda Kellum, our data librarian. And uh, this will, is recorded and will be hosted on the same web page where I just dropped in. It also has the sign-up form if you're interested in attending that one or the one we have coming up in March on researching with digital archives. Um, note that there is another uh, webinar series on online learning innovation. The next one coming up for that is March 13th at 11 a.m. on Universal Design for Learning and uh, the, in April on Library Online Tutorials and Research Students and Instructors. So uh, be on the lookout for those things. So yeah, um, are there any questions as we're kind of wrapping this up? Okay, Carla said no questions. That is fine. Uh, yeah, and the other one said no, thank you. Great, thank you guys. Um, everyone have a great day. And thank you again, Christine and Mark. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.